So I want to start off with a showcase. I want to highlight VRAM usage, draw calls, and frame time. The FPS was roughly the same in all the examples, so frame time is more important for comparison. The control scene. Using mesh instance 3Ds with high detail, assuming no LODs used. Using mesh instance 3Ds with all LODs, assuming a LOD system with all LODs in VRAM. Using mesh instance 3Ds with lowest detail, assuming the best case and it's the easiest to render. Using render server with chunk lods, yellow is lod 5, cyan, lod 4, blue is lod 3, light blue is lod 2, lighter blue, lod 1, and white is lod 0. Using one combined mesh instance 3D with chunk lods, same as the last one with reduced draw calls. The performance isn't too different, but I just wanted to show that performance isn't drastically sacrificed to get chunk lots working. You can also see some flickering, and I'll talk about that later, but let's get into how everything works. With highly detailed meshes, trying to load them in their entirety can end up using most of your available VRAM. A better solution would be only load or stream parts of a mesh that are visible. For example, I have a Napoleon statue mesh that takes up 600 megabytes or 0.6 gigabytes in VRAM and has 6.7 million polygons, which is a lot. If you have 6 gigabytes of VRAM available like me, 10 more models like this and you will have no more VRAM. The first step in mesh streaming is to break apart our original mesh into small chunks that can be loaded independently. After dividing the mesh into chunks, we simplify each chunk and recombine them into a single mesh again that has lower level of detail and less polygons. We can repeat the divide, simplify, and recombine steps to make a series of LODs and an array of chunks for each of those LODs. This is a pre-processing step and we can spend as much time as we need doing this. So what is the best method for splitting up a mesh? I'm not sure if there's a definitive best method, so I decided to generate a BVH which should divide the mesh based on vertex density. I was inspired to do this based on Sebastian Lake's video on ray tracing in Unity. I randomly change how evenly the volume gets split, since I want to avoid creating dense vertex packed regions on the edges of my volumes that don't get simplified. This is a problem mentioned in the Nanite GDC talk. When simplifying a chunk, there are ways of preserving the general shape of the original mesh while reducing detail. These methods are good when simplifying an entire model gradually, but for me, I am simplifying only portions of a mesh at a time. My only rule was to preserve the border edges of my chunk, and I aggressively simplified everything else for maximum polygon reduction. The final step in generating our chunks is getting child parent relationships between the chunks of different LODs. I simply check if the AABB of a chunk is intersecting with the AABB of a chunk from a higher LOD to determine if it's a child. With all chunks generated, we can determine what chunks to render. This is done by checking if it is even on the screen, how much space a chunk occupies on the screen, and if it is behind something else. I'm going to call this algorithm chunk selection. Chunk selection works by going through all the least detailed LODs chunks and determining if we should go down to the chunk's children or when the camera is close enough for extra detail. We can recursively look through the children and we also store a list of dead ends, which are chunks we already explored. This is necessary because multiple chunks can share children and re-exploring these paths will cause the algorithm to slow down. This is basically a depth-first search.
I can use a chunk size and position to check if it is on screen and know its screen coverage, but I need depth info to determine if a chunk is behind something else. With a second camera and a quad rendering the depth, I can get a depth texture. I pass the texture into a compute shader, where I can collect the depth values of all the pixels by writing them into a uniform buffer. The buffer is locked by mutex since a separate thread writes to it while it's being read from another thread. I did plan on doing more of chunk selection within compute shaders too, but I found that with the amount of data I was passing back and forth between the CPU and GPU, the game started to stutter. Also, compute shaders do not support recursion, and the size of my dead end list became a problem due to the limited amount of memory each GPU thread was allocated. I also had to send my data back to my CPU eventually to create the final mesh, so I decided to keep chunk selection on the CPU. In the end, I performed chunk selection on a separate thread, which kept the frame rate smooth. With all my chunks selected, I can combine the mesh data within these chunks into a single mesh and render it. I mentioned earlier how we need to stream portions of our mesh data to our VRAM since we cannot load the entire model at once. Technically I am doing that, but really I just moved this problem from VRAM to RAM since at the start of the scene I have to load in all the chunk data into RAM. In my defense, having 16 gigabytes of RAM is common nowadays while VRAM is a bit more of a precious commodity. Generating each mesh individually, we can render them with the render server. At this point we finally have something showing up on our screen. The next thing I could do is combine the geometry data from all the mesh instances and render them as one combined mesh like Nanite and reduce draw calls since it is one mesh. The geometry is in object space, which was fine when rendering them individually, however the combined mesh needs a custom shader that transforms the geometry from object space to world space. We can send an array of global transform matrices to the shader and multiply the vertexes by these matrices to get the correct positioning. We pick a matrix based on the vertex ID, and we pass another array along with the vertex counts of each mesh that is being combined. The only issue with combining all geometry is that there will be a limit to how many lights and decals that can affect this combined mesh. Deferred lighting would at least solve the light limit issue. With all that explained, I have come up with a list of things, both simple and complicated, that could be improved. For objects too far away, we could switch to GPU instancing with, with the lowest detailed LOD or using imposters. I could use multiple threads to divide the work between objects that are close versus far away. Objects that are close to the camera would have a higher priority. The LOD system only works with one camera and it would be nice to have support for multiple cameras. Chunks that are occluded can be cold. Currently, LOD chunks don't update every frame, only every 0.2 seconds. This is enough time to see pop in and pop out. To have occlusion cooling, I would need to update every frame. I could save UV and UV2 data when generating chunks. This would be important for simplifying models with textures. My example meshes don't have any textures, and that's why. Chunk simplification could be done more intelligently due to the aggressiveness of the mesh simplification. Seam lines in the UV and topology of the underlying mesh are not accounted for. Moving chunk selection to a compute shader would be ideal. Also, it would be nice if there was a way to render triangle slash vertex data from this compute shader without having to pass everything back to the CPU again. There was some discussion about this on Godot's proposals for procedural mesh generation on the GPU. Chunk data can be loaded and unloaded in RAM over time. I could group this chunk data based on the LOD level or based on groupings of chunks. I load them as needed and periodically check whether the data is being used. I could also make this data smaller by saving the vertex data in triangle strips or triangle fans. In particular, I know when the chunks get simplified, they produce fan structures naturally. Subtle flickering could be resolved with some fine tuning. I believe the problem may just be with how I'm handling multi-threading since building the mesh is done in separate threads. A workaround when combining geometry would be to hide the origin point, since this is where the flickering is visible. Lastly, the most obvious optimization would be to use GD extension with C++ or using C Sharp. With that, I think this mesh streaming solution has some ways to go before it can come close to what you would get with Nanite. Although, as a showcase for what is possible in Godot, I think it is pretty cool. Also, this project was primarily made using GDScript, so you know this isn't even the best case scenario for this project. Currently, this project is not ready for production and does not support some basic features I think others would expect from it. I did not do nearly enough testing on this to be comfortable with putting it out there. The models I used have about 100k polygons, but I would want to test something with millions of polygons. What I'm saying is that I've not really stress tested this yet.
I may make this project available on GitHub, but I do plan on working on other things in the near future and moving on from this. I hope this video helps demystify Nanite and mesh streaming in general. Personally, this project has made me think a lot about memory usage, video game optimization, and Nanite. I hope I can get others to think about some of these things too, and I hope that I can encourage other game devs to try building things that seem hard if they are interesting. And that's about all.